a special thanks and shout out to Hobson Chevrolet Buick GMC of Martinsville, Indiana for allowing me to come out and film this 2019 Chevrolet Blazer. My first impressions upon driving reveals decent acceleration. It also has a smooth ride with active noise cancellation and a very nice and quiet interior. Despite having a 14 year hiatus in the United States and ending production in Brazil in 2012, the Chevrolet Blazer has been a very popular mid-sized GM built SUV alongside the GMC Jimmy and Oldsmobile Bravada variants. And the announcement of its return generated plenty of excitement as well as some controversy. With the mid-sized crossover SUV segment more saturated than ever before, GM decided to revive an old tried and true nameplate to their new offering and as a result it was received with mixed reviews with the K5 and S10 Blazer fans responding mostly negatively. Taking styling cues from the Camaro, the Blazer will sit between the Equinox and the three-row seat Traverse in the company's lineup. Blazers will be offered in several trim levels, starting with the base level L, 2.5L, 3.6L, RS, and top level Premier. They will also be offered in front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive configurations. This black clear coat 3.6L leather has a jet black leather interior and is all-wheel drive with an electronic drive mode selector as shown here. Power comes from a dual overhead cam 24 valve 3.6 liter direct injection variable valve timing V6 engine. It creates 305 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, 269 pound feet of torque at 5,000 RPM. And while no official instrumented tests are out, I am estimating 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7.8 seconds with a 0 to 100 mile per hour time in 23.7 seconds. Quarter mile is reached in 16.5 seconds at 88 miles per hour with the top speed electronically limited to 125 miles per hour. Fuel capacity on the 3.6 all-wheel drive is 21.7 US gallons. The Blazer consumes 4.8 gallons per 100 miles driven and with an estimated 450 mile driving range. EPA fuel economy ratings are 18 miles per gallon city, 25 miles per gallon highway with 21 miles per gallon combined. On my 20 mile mixed drive, I experienced 20 miles per gallon. And the sole available transmission is GM's 9-speed 9T50E Hydromatic Automatic Transmission. It does feature low gear selection as well as manual shiftability. The 4,210 pound curb weight combined with a 6,100 pound gross vehicle weight rating, a 112.7 inch wheelbase and 191.4 inch overall length, the Blazer 3.6 all-wheel drive features a 4,500 pound towing capacity and a payload capacity that ranges from 1,714 pounds to 2,219 pounds. Trailer hookup is made easier with the available trailer hitch guidance and hitch view modes in the 8-inch touchscreen display. And looking around the rear, the Blazer is nicely styled with a steeply raked rear hatch which is surprisingly easy to look out the rear glass. Tail lamps are LED units with nicely styled double Y design elements and as well as lighted bow tie logos. Turn indicators however are incandescent and this vehicle does feature the trailer tow package. Looking down below satin silver trim as well as wide dual exhaust tips complete the rear end look.
The profile of the new Blazer is aggressive to say the least. With an almost Lamborghini Urus look to it, styling is sharp with the RS trim, be trim being the most sporty of the lot. Steering on the new Blazer is electronically assisted variable rate, vehicle speed sensitive rack and pinion. Wheels are 18 inch bright silver painted aluminum with P23565 R18 Michelin tires. Brakes are four wheel independent disc brakes with ABS, Stabilo Track Stability and Traction Control, and according to Chevrolet, a fully independent suspension that is tuned for both smooth ride qualities as well as optimum handling. And in my test drive that I performed today, I found both of those qualities to be very true. The vehicle is very smooth riding as well as very quiet on the road. With Ford revising the Bronco name and the extreme popularity of the Jeep Wrangler vehicles as well as the Toyota 4Runner seeing a spike in sales, one has to wonder why Chevrolet didn't make their new Blazer a true off-road capable machine. A missed opportunity in a competitive market if you ask me, however, overall as a crossover vehicle, I am quite impressed. Up front is where the new Blazer really shines, with a large grille opening similar to that of the Camaro split by a chrome divider, with LED driving lights mounted high up, Jeep Cherokee style, and Xenon high intensity projector beam headlamps mounted below. Turn indicators are below the headlamps, and while the Blazer surely is a love or love it hate it look, I actually happen to like it. While originally intended to be built at Spring Hill, Tennessee, controversy was struck when GM management made the decision to have the Blazer built at its Ramos Arizepe plant in Coahuila, Mexico. This decision has caused quite the stir with the United Auto Workers Union, understandably, and with Ford making the decision to move some of their production back to the states, and with GM closing several plants and cutting several thousand jobs, has not been popular with many and cost Terry Ditz, the director of UAW's GM department, to order members to boycott the new Blazer. Alright, moving on, this vehicle is equipped with remote start as standard equipment on this trim level. To operate is simple, first you need to lock the vehicle, then press and hold the remote start button. And with this smart key access system as standard, by keeping the key fob in your purse or pocket, you're able to lock and unlock the vehicle doors. It is an easy process by locating the chrome button on the door handle, pressing it once, causes the doors to lock. Pressing the button again, We'll unlock the doors. And as we can see, it is a nicely styled all new interior for 2019. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the fit and finish and quality. Nice appearing door cards with titanium accents, as well as some chrome and satin aluminum accents. Power door lock switch. Of course, you also have power mirrors that feature LED signal repeaters. And the mirrors also feature blind spot monitors. And of course you also have power windows and power door locks. This vehicle does feature the premium Bose audio system. You've also got a customizable lift back opening. Molded cubby holes in the door pockets. 8-way power driver seat with adjustable lumbar support. The passenger side only features the 8-way adjustment and no lumbar support. You've also got contrast stitching, high adjustable headrests. On the dash panel, you do have your instrument panel brightness and dim, automatic headlamp control with parking lamps. And down below, you do have your parking uh, brake, tilt and telescoping leather wrapped steering wheel. And taking a look at the seats, the seats are very nice and very supportive. They are also very comfortable. They do, I would like to see a little bit more lateral support, but I believe the RS has that in the sportier trim. Alright, let's pan through the interior and show more details. As you can see here, this power steering is very fluid, very easy to use. It is a four-spoke leather-wrapped steering wheel with satin aluminum trim. You've also got your uh, cruise controls on the left-hand side, as well as Bluetooth and phone controls and trip computer controls on the right-hand side. This vehicle features the standard instrumentation with analog gauges and a 4.2-inch full-color LCD display. It does feature a small trip computer with various vehicle functional readouts, as well as navigation and phone readouts.
All right, and let's paint over the top of the dashboard. As you can see, there's a nice vinyl padded material with accent stitching across the top. It does feature a very high-end luxury look to it. A very nicely styled center console with a high amount of start-stop button. You've got your four-way flashers mounted below. And a smartly styled, semi-floating 8-inch touchscreen display. It is the Chevrolet MyLink touchscreen display. However, I, I did discover that most of the functions and the gestures have been uh, greatly improved over the previous generations. It does feature GPS navigation, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto capabilities. Electronic dual zone automatic climate control. It also features heated seats. Placing the vehicle in reverse does activate the vehicle's reverse camera, and it is a very nice reverse camera to say the least. Various functions, including 360 degree around view monitors, as well as front and rear facing cameras. You've also got side to side cameras as well. So as you can see, in, this, in the next video clips, there's a plethora of camera options available. Alright, moving down, one of my favorite interior features is using the trim ring on the air vents to adjust the temperature for the dual zone climate control. Turning the ring to the right will increase the temperature while turning it to the left decreases. You've also got two buttons for the fan speed selector as well as a row of LEDs. You've also got three position heated seats. You also have the ability to sync both driver and passenger climates. A nice wide center armrest and console with a satin silver and light titanium accents. Two cup holders, a nice deep storage console with two USB ports and a 12 volt power point. Overhead you do have an automatic dimming rear view mirror. It does feature the integrated video camera as you can see here in this clip. By flipping the day-night lever, it activates the cameras, and the buttons underneath allow you to adjust the brightness, the angle, as well as the up and down um, adjustments. And flipping the lever back just re takes it back to the glass. Overhead, you do have OnStar controls, as well as your passenger airbag off switch. You've also got controls for the panoramic sunroof. You've also got overhead LED reading lights, three channel home link universal garage door opener, and of course sunglasses holder storage. Sun visors do feature LED illuminated vanity mirrors with theater dimming, and the, van, or the visors do slide out on extensions. You've also got dampened overhead assist handles. Controversy aside, the new Blazer seems a worthy contender in the admittedly very full crossover segment, and with production of the Chevrolet Cruze, Impala, and Volt passenger cars coming to an end, we hope to see US-based production ramp back up in the near future. So while the Blazer is absolutely not what the K5 and S10 Blazer fans and purists wanted or expected, and while it is not at all built for any off-roading whatsoever, what it is is a very competent and nice, quiet crossover SUV. So while it's not the Blazer we expected, it is a perfect contender in this very crowded segment. Alright, now let's take a look at the rear seat. As you can see, the rear seat is very nice and spacious. Enough room for three passengers. It is a 60-40 split folding seat with reclining seat backs. Nicely styled door cards with chrome door poles, molded po storage pockets. And the rear seat in this vehicle features outboard head restraints that are adjustable, three-point seat belts. This vehicle also features a center armrest that folds down. It does reveal a nice padded armrest as well as molded cup holders. This vehicle is also equipped with a rear seat reminder. That reminds you if you've opened the uh, rear door before you started the vehicle to make sure that everything is clear. 
You've also got rear seat air vents, two USB ports, of course an out household style AC outlet. A relatively flat rear floor, you've also got some storage, and of course seat back mat pockets. Folding the seats is very easy. Though not required, you can dump the headrest by pressing that button, then lifting the lever at the base of the seat. It is a pretty effortless um, operation, and it gives access to the nice load flat floor in the cargo area. And there are three ways to access the lift gate area. You can adjust your lift gate knob or press the button in the center. You can also press the membrane switch located in the rear hatch area. Or you can double press the remote key fob. It is a power opening and closing hatch. And as you can see, it is a very nicely and very smartly styled luggage area. You do have some wheelhouse intrusion, but overall it is a load flat floor with carpeting, dual LED illumination, you've also got some molded storage cubbies, and underneath the floor you do have a compact spare tire with jack and tools and compartmentalized storage. For the luggage area, you have a 33 and a half inch lift over height. You've also got the ability with these handles to lower the rear seats from the luggage area. And cargo capacity with the rear seats up is 34 and a half cubic feet, and with the rear seats down, it expands out to 64.2 cubic feet. Closing the lift gate is easy by pressing the button in the trim panel. It automatically closes and latches.
right, and this does conclude our in-depth review of the brand new 2019 Chevrolet Blazer. We hope the review was informative, and if you liked this video and would like to see more like this, comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhoodcarreviews. As always, thanks for watching.